7 a.m. here in Salt Lake City. We are going to get snow today on the valley floor. According to the weatherman, there's a pretty good breeze coming in right now. So it's all pushing in. The entire sky is just dark, dark, dark. Shanna's up there on the 11th floor. Snooze right now. I'm going to take the truck in, get it fixed. The uh, boom's got a leak. Out this side right here, I gotta take this arm off, do a brazen weld. Hopefully it's just a pinhole, nothing too big like a rebuild of the cylinder or anything like that. We'll know shortly, at least in a few hours, they get the teardown done for the first job this morning. That's why we're going in so early. While this thing is in your guys' shop, would you be willing to run an extension cord here to plug my laptop in? Because I always leave it just in sleep mode, so it's always on and it's plugged into an inverter. And when I leave it for an hour, it's like it's been sitting overnight just running on battery power. How long of an extension cord do you need? Just an extension cord that comes up and just goes and plugs in right here. Right here on this black. Oh. Just, pl just plug this into the wall basically. This black oh, okay. cord. Just charging, you mean? Yeah, and okay. then it, that way it just doesn't go, that way it doesn't actually shut yeah. off. Okay. It's not a big deal if it actually does, but I just like to. Yeah, no, you need to charge. Also, just that hanging from the steering column. But I'm almost certain the leaks on this side, because initially when I started picking cars up, it started dripping like from here. But then I think it pulled up in here because then it started to come out the end here. And it stayed primarily to this side for a long time. And then all of a sudden one day it came out this end, but only once. And I think it may have just ran across. Maybe I was on a hill or something like this and it came out, but it's almost always when I've got it lifted in the air. There's never a puddle over here. There's only a puddle about that big. Could be the cylinder. Could be a pinhole. You know, I don't know if you guys have to weld. I don't know. We don't know when you get in there, but I just, I definitely start on this side and run it and operate it. And see something just obvious squirts. I'm it up. Let's run it. right there. Huh? Oh, okay. The main, which one? That one? Did one cylinder does that whole motion? Yeah, it's a double action cylinder. Okay. That one cylinder, though, that double action cylinder is a crisis cylinder. I'll have to call and check again, but I think the last time we did the cylinder alone was seven or eight bucks. I can handle 700 bucks. Well, no, it's just, well, the whole unit's only 7,000 bucks. So. I know, but oh. I, why would the manufacturer not stock cylinders? Because they are one of the honest manufacturers I've ever dealt with. Okay. To be honest with you. Good answer. I, I, made, I made an order once for them for a whole sneaker. It took them like three weeks to get here. And then I ordered pins. Just the pins and the bushing would be going in your head. Uh -huh. It was two and a half weeks. It's like, Guys, you should be at the shelf. I wonder if Rick found anything out about changing out his head for that one that has a little flip-out arm. Because if, it's gonna, if it ends up being here for a week, I wonder if you want to look at the options, maybe just go on that route. If it, if you never give me a price, and it's like two, three thousand dollars, you know, as opposed to spending a thousand to rebuilding the one that's on there, I may just go that route. But I'm gonna go talk to you. Yeah, I'm gonna check with Rick. 
drop it down and get it out. You know, I very rarely get into a repo that doesn't have the gas light on. At uh, Tahoe, I got out of that garage the other night, someone made a comment about the fact that the gas light was on and it was below E. These people that drive around in these vehicles on empty and they throw a couple gallons in here and there because they're, you know, going through so many financial difficulties that the gas is a luxury they can barely do without, let alone the, the payments and insurance and everything else. But hopefully we make it up the street here to the first closest gas station. Got this thing buzzing at me telling me you're about to run out of fuel, dude. I'm like, I don't own this vehicle. It's not my fault. Don't make me have to push it. So the final words in. We looked everything over. They looked at it. The, the leaking's not coming out the end of the cylinder head. It's not coming from the inner hoses. It's coming from up in the tube, which is an indication that it's an entire cylinder replacement. And, you know, a whole new cylinder. That's a double-head cylinder, double-action cylinder. It's about seven, almost $800.00. They called high tech and they have one in stock. Which side is the fuel on? This side. So, yeah, they called high tech and they've uh, got one in stock. Thank goodness, one. They've got one in stock, <laughs> literally. And uh, I'm paying a little bit extra, about $160 to have it next day aired because it was going to be about a week from Texas to have it ground and I can't, ha I can't have the truck down for a week. So, they're next day airing it. Today's Thursday, so it'll be here tomorrow, which is Friday. They're going to stay late and get it put on, get the truck up and running by tomorrow night. Um, so with labor and everything, and they're going to replace the center bushing because my, my head's got a lot of pitch on it. So they're going to change that center pin and bushing as well while they're in there. They're going to do a full service on the arm and everything. By the time it's all said and done, I bet you we're somewhere around thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars um, because they, they quoted me right around eleven fifty for just the cylinder replacement but after we went out there and we looked at the whole arm and everything that needs to be done you know that's my work truck and it you know the boom is what makes the truck what it is so uh that thing needs to be operating and functioning good so we're gonna get that that slop in the head that causes it to tilt at an angle when i've got something on there we're gonna get that fixed as well as getting the uh cylinder that does the in and out extraction of the forks fixed I have a whole new head on that thing by the end of business tomorrow but uh, I told him, yeah, call me with good news tomorrow because he said, you know, the only thing is if they start getting it into there and start tearing it down and it gives them trouble and it's hard to tear apart, they could uh, possibly, there's the possibility, because they're not in on Saturdays, that it could go in until next Monday, but they're going to do their best. To, they've always done with me really good. That's why I keep going back to them and always recommend them to people because they're a really good shop. And I talked to them. Oh, they got me a price quote on changing out the whole head for one of the self-loader ones, like that one on that video that where the arms flip out so I don't have to go out and I don't have to manually put the arms out every, on every repo, but it would be an auto self-loader head, and to change it out would be about $5,500, whereas a whole sneaker unit costs about $7,000 to do the conversion to that self-loader head would be about $5,500, but the company that doesn't doesn't have one available yet. They're still working on the design and stuff to be able to make it be retrofitted to this unit because this unit's from a different company different manufacturer and so they're they've got someone who's got one of these units in detroit and they're doing the the prototype and once they've got the prototype and the all the measurements and the cuts and the parts all fitted and everything and they got it put together as a kit then someone like me can come along for fifty five hundred dollars and, and just order it and with shipping and freight and labor you know uh, almost six grand later i'd have a self-loader head and so when those become available i'm going to do it and uh it, you know, I think it's worth it to, over the long haul to do that improvement on the truck and, uh, and to have that self-loader sneaker head. It's expensive. It's, it's a pricey change-out. Um, and like I said, it's so close to the price of a whole new unit, but I don't need a whole new unit. The rest of the unit in, is installed and the bracing's all done to the truck and it's it's up and working and hydraulic cables are connected and it's all there. So I, the only thing I really need to do is change out the head anyways, but I think it'd be a neat improvement and it'd be fun to see on the videos, but we get some gas put in this repo and then get the truck picked up tomorrow. Alright, so my plans were to take off today and tomorrow while the truck is being uh, worked on. And, I mean, I, not take off, but be at the hospital and be working on, still, still working on things that are business related. 
and spending time in the hospital with Shanda, but not being out in the truck doing the actual recovery work was the plan. But yet here I am on the same day that I dropped the truck off at the shop. They won't have the parts till tomorrow, but they need to get working on the lift and get it grinded down and get the old high, uh, cylinder out and have it ready so when the new cylinder comes, they only have the second half, which is putting it back together. And so it's critical that they get the teardown done today. And it's 11.15 now in the AM still. And I got a call from one of my finance companies. They've got an emergency situation where they've got this vehicle that was reported stolen by the owner and the girlfriend had it and the police uh, pulled her over driving it because it was reported stolen and she has paperwork on her signed by him giving her permission to be in possession of the vehicle he's saying he didn't that's bogus that she, he didn't create that paperwork it's, it's not true and he didn't sign it and so they've created a case number now and the cops have called the lien holder and said that the vehicle is going to be impounded if they, we don't, they don't send somebody over here in downtown Salt Lake, which I'm just, I was 10 minutes away from it. And then he also has a secondary vehicle on this loan. So it's a double header. This first one's an 05 Dodge Magnum. And the second piece of collateral is a 99 Dodge 1500 quad cab. And she supposedly was in possession of this Dodge Magnum. I don't know the whole story about what this address is that it's sitting at. I guess he came over. He, and tried to get the vehicle and the cops wouldn't let him take it. I don't understand that because he's the owner of the vehicle. But this is, again, the information that's been passed over to us by the finance company. And so I told him I would come over here and look and see what's at the address where this black Dodge Magnum is supposed to be at. Where he claims he came over and tried to get it. The cops wouldn't let him take it. It sounds to me more like he tried to come take it. And maybe she had another dude over here that wouldn't let him take it. Or he just didn't have the balls to take it. Or didn't have a key and didn't have a tow truck. Or who knows be a number of many reasons why he didn't actually pick it up but we're gonna come check and see what's at this address there it is right there it's behind the fence and blocked in by another vehicle so there's a girl sitting out on the porch we have to go up and talk to her but I'm seeing very quickly why they were unable to take it They've got a loan on it, I guess, through a uh, finance company out of Bountiful. All the papers on it right now to say that she's got, she's got the loan, she's got the... Show them, bring them the papers. Man. I know what I'm saying though, is the company, there's a company that has the title and actually has a lien filed with the state on it that owns it. And I understand that you've paid money on the car, but the money you've paid, you have to, whoever you paid it to, I'm guessing it was probably an ex-husband or something. You paid a shop? Yeah. Okay. That shop doesn't own the vehicle. They, they, the money you paid them wasn't for the vehicle. It was I'll for... Go, I'll go up and talk to RJ because I'm not going to let it go. Oh, you know who he is? Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. okay. I talked to him. Okay. I didn't know. I, I just... I, this is my first oh, time yeah. out here, so... No, no, I, <laughs> That's why I say, I was like, it's not my car. Okay. <laughs> I talked to RJ and uh, um, I, I talked to him, in fact, last week. I'll go up and talk to him today. Okay. Well, you don't even go up. You can just call him on the phone, but I, he just... They just sent us over an assignment to come pick up this vehicle. No, I'm not going to let it go. Okay. I know, I, I, and that's why my job is to come over and find out what your stance is so I can report back yeah, to them what you're saying. Okay, okay. And I know that, uh, I know that Richard the police has... came yesterday and they didn't yeah. take it. They the got... cops can't take it. They don't, the police yeah, are actually limited on what they can do, but that's why they send repossession companies out. Yeah. That way it's one civil party to another civil party. Cops, they say, this is a civil matter, we yeah, can't get involved, yeah, so... It's civil between you and so, I right now, too. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not going to let it, it's not going anywhere. Okay. Until I get my money. Okay. So I get my money from the shop. How much money are you wanting to to release the vehicle voluntarily? Well, I've got I've got a, I've got a receipt right now from the shop for twenty two thousand seven hundred and nineteen something 
thousand dollars for that. I have a bunch of receipts that I paid to to Mr. Siapanua for other payments on the car. Okay. Yeah, that's okay, paperwork. That's how it was. Right. And RJ knows that. See, we got the loan in Richard's name because he, because I had awful credit. I didn't have a job at the time. Right. It's like a straw purchase. Yeah. yeah. So then I paid Richard. And Richard I paid, but and he and he got it taken out of his bank account to help his credit. Okay. Okay. And that's how that went. I've got all the receipts from Richard that I paid for. I paid the down payment and I paid the uh, the uh, insurance deductible to get it out of the shop. Plus storage. Richard left it in there for four, four months. Four months. Yeah. And he just thinks he's gonna come so, and get it from me. So what's the? Give me a ballpark total amount that you would need to to satisfy your financial uh, yeah, obligation every, to this. Everything I paid for it. I paid the fifteen hundred dollars down. I paid the three sixty five a month. And I paid for how many months? The three sixty five a month. Since we bought it since since uh, May. Of this year. Yeah. Okay, and uh, then. I've got all that. I can take it to so, the show. Okay. I would like to put the loan in my name for this car, though. Okay. Because that was the whole deal. What? what uh, the officer actually told her yesterday too okay, to go yeah. get the registration put in her name. That's what I mean, they told her yesterday. So. That's what the police officer said, but that was their suggestion. But I'm so sick. Go pick those flowers. No, 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 no. Go pick those flowers. They're pretty. They're pretty. That's why they're there. Okay. Well, I'll report to him what you told me, and then if you can get up there when you feel better, and okay, and talk to him, then we'll we'll go from there. No, you're being way cool. I, that's why I, I'm glad to come up here and talk with you and find out what the situation is because this is my first time hearing all this. <laughs> okay. What What about the '99 Dodge Quad Cab? Do you know if that's over at the apartments? Would I find it there right now? Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, if you don't find it there, you'll find it out at uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts or the warehouse out there. Oh, I don't know where that's at. You know where that that's is? That's his place of employment? No, that's her place of employment. He doesn't work anywhere. He got fired. The, girl, she, yeah, the girlfriend? Yeah. He got fired for dirty UA. Okay. So, but, you know, he hasn't even been able to make oh, the payments. Oh, my big boy. Come here. I, I come asked come RJ come that here. last week when he called. My I said, big boy. Okay. So I don't know why he's wanting to pick it up. I'm sure it's Richard that has a deal with it. Probably because of the dispute about who and what and where and that exactly. kind of stuff. Exactly. So, yeah. so, all right. Well, she wants to keep it. She wants to make the payment. Yeah, she, well, well, she well did, they would probably they would probably payments. prefer that as yeah. well. Yeah. But I, mean, I would, I, you know, if, I, whatever he. I, I, I was honestly, I was. Just, but I've been posting. I just thought I was going to do it for two days. Okay. <laughs> but uh, no, I know the payments are turned on. It's not like he's already laid it out. Uh -huh. from Richard. Okay. Uh, <coughs> and, you know, that's why I didn't pay directly because they were taking out of his bank account for his credit. You know what I mean? Yeah, so they report yeah, the good. You know, that, and the guy, the guy yeah. called on when we brought it up, and he knows that too. You know what I mean? Yep. No, that makes sense. Okay. I'll tell him what you told me, and then if you can just contact him as soon as possible and follow up, I'd appreciate it. No, no. Good to meet you. Matt. All right. Thank you. That car is blocked in, backed in, it's rear wheel drive, so even if it was accessible, most people were not. Let that thing go, which, you know, once you've got it hooked, I'm not asking permission to take it, but got right there behind the fence, She's she knows the law. She started mentioning private property, and I'm not going to let you take it, you can't trespass, and she went over all that stuff, so she's very, very, very seasoned on repossession. She's probably been repoed herself numerous times and probably researched it and found out what the laws are and what her rights are. She said, you're civil, I'm civil, you know. So <clears throat> people like that are just, a, you're, there's a lawsuit and criminal charges just waiting to happen there for a repo company that pushes that one too far. I talked to her, just felt her out, see what they're, they're, they're you know, what what are your requirements to let this vehicle go if you were going to let it go? And she starts just throwing out all kinds of thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars far beyond what the vehicle's worth, you know, that she claims she's dumped into this thing and she wants to keep it, and it's like, so we'll write a report, tell them what the situation is in the layout, and uh, really the only way that vehicle's gonna be picked up from that address is with a crane. You'd have to go over there and park a crane on the street, swing the crane over and actually pick the vehicle up from its, its location and swing it around and drop it onto a flatbed tow truck, or just drop it on the street and then pick it up from the rear, But I would, in that situation, because there's nothing they could do. You know, they can't stop you from parking a crane on the public street and swinging it over and, and picking the vehicle up. You know, they can't stop that from happening. And, and 
they could just sit there and watch, but I wouldn't want to stick the vehicle on a public road where they could run out with a key because that's the kind of person right there that would absolutely, right in the middle of your repo, would try to take it right back from you. That's the kind of person right there would follow you to your yard and, uh, you know, do everything they could to try to stop you from successfully repossessing the vehicle. So that's a, that's a nightmare situation right there. I can see why they finance company called so quickly and said that they've got enough rush job. Got to, we got to deal with this right now. we got an address where this collateral's at. And most likely, they'll probably have us go back late at night put a tracking device on that because now that she knows that we're out looking for it, I, I can almost guarantee that the vehicle's going to be, get moved and uh, hidden somewhere. And she's not going to feel comfortable uh, leaving her. I don't know. She seems like the type actually that's kind of flaunting the fact that here it's sitting. You can see it. It's behind this fence. I dare you to come take it. It's like a car in a half-open garage, and they sit there, and they just wait for you to come do something stupid. So I actually think that she may not actually move it from that location. Uh, that's my professional opinion, but for safety purposes, we'll probably end up going over there and GPS tagging it late, late at night. They got that little yappy dog in the front yard. I saw him. I, he's definitely a fighter. You know, and, and that's why I kept him calm and cool. He shook my hand at the end and told me his first name, and he knows my first name. And you know, I want to lay out all, establish all of that relationships, communication, conversation, all of that right now, so that if this thing goes south in the future, I've got a basis with these people, and that we can kind of fall back on, and we're not just complete total strangers and meeting for the first time. That right there was an initial meeting, and that was the breaking the ice, and I, you know wasn't an asshole and I wasn't pushy and I just, you know, very straight to the point. Here's what we got to do. Listen to what they say. And now I'll report back to that finance company on what I suggest. If you want that car physically picked up, you're going to have to invest some money into uh, some equipment, you know, and I can get a heavy crane out there. <clears throat> Absolutely. The way it sits, it's not in a garage. It's very accessible. And, uh, you know, we can do this repo, but, it's, you know, you have to pony up some money if because uh, it's not going to be just a straightforward back up and hook and leave and it's not definitely not going to be a voluntary so she says she's going to go up and talk to the finance company and take in all the receipts she has and show them what she's got and everything else and they, they may not care about any of that because most likely they won't because it's the, the loans in his name they've got to lean on it they own it outright but at the same time we still have to find a way to uh, properly get the vehicle legally picked up in the situation it sits in right now uh, that's the other reason to put a GPS tag on it is there's a very real possibility that she may take the car out and drive it from time to time when she feels safe that there's no one coming after it. So if I drive by there and I see that car gone at 10 o'clock at night after I've got a tracking device on it, that's the best case scenario. Then I could just ping it, see where it's located, and hopefully wherever it's at, she's gonna have, they'd have no idea. And then we could go pick it up probably somewhere else, out, not behind, you know, not sitting in that, behind that fence. They may not always be sitting right behind that fence, but if I go by there at 10, 11, 12 o'clock tonight, and then again tomorrow, and then again another night, and I never see it move over the over course of a couple of days, then there's a very real possibility that that vehicle's just going to sit there and do nothing until she feels like she's got some kind of a safe resolution, and it's not a, not going to disappear on her. So as of right now, she's flaunting the fact that she's got it, and you can't touch it. Tough situation. see it a lot. We see it a lot. The split up people, and he said, she said, I did, I spent, I'm out this money go after yourself, you can't have it, blah, blah, blah. All right, so we've had a three-way conference call with the uh, finance company and the top manager for this district area, and we've had kind of a powwow about the circumstances, and they've got this guy on their side right now, and he's in possession of the truck, but he's not in possession of the Magnum, that's the lady that we were just talking to. And so, and she told us where we could come out here and find the truck at this uh, distribution center way out by the airport. And so I've headed out here, and on the way I was talking on the phone, and uh, they've made it the determining factor. So there's the truck right there. We verified the plate, and uh, they've decided to not have us pick it up right now because that will piss him off because he's in, you know, that's his girlfriend's driving that truck, and this is her job. And if we pick it up right now, then they, they're going to get themselves a beat up 99. Dodge pickup truck, and they, they still have, don't have the 05 Magnum, and so they want to pick up the Magnum first, and then immediately go get the truck, and then call the the whole thing due. Um, but they want me to put a tracking device on the truck so that we know where it's at, uh, so we can immediately head to where it's at as soon as we figure out how to get the Magnum. 
and then I'm going to go over uh, after hours tonight very carefully. I mean, I'm going to park quite a distance away. I'm going to walk up carefully, you know, because the, that shit could be sitting on the porch smoking a cigarette at freaking one o'clock in the morning, very likely. And so I need to find a way to get a tracking device onto that Magnum. Uh, I can't just slap one up underneath the frame because she's the kind of person that will look for something like that. Um, she's going to be aware of the technologies we have access to and, and everything else. You know, see, very seasoned debtor. After talking with the finance company, we found out that she's got over $70,000 worth of fraud charges uh, that have been filed against her in different states. Uh, here in this state, uh, these people are absolute, at best, criminals. And uh, any unfortunate recovery agent with a lack of experience goes out there and steps into this snake pit, they're going to get bit 10 ways a Sunday, and they're going to end up with a lawsuit, they're going to lose their license, they're going to lose their business, they're going to lose their insurance. It's good. These people, this is the kind of person that even if that car was sitting on a public street and I could hook to the rear end of it while I was hooking to it, she's the kind of person that would come out and cause something to happen, some kind of damage, some kind of lay down in front of your truck and not move. You know, just ridiculous stuff that would kind of try to coax an inexperienced agent into making a mistake, and then uh, and then she'd immediately sue. Even if this lawsuit was to be thrown out and not go anywhere, she would still sue and and get, drag your ass into court. I mean, that, that's the kind. This is the kind of case where you would want to absolutely know that you have found a way to get in, get it hooked, and get out of there without having any contact with her whatsoever. Because she's not on the loan. She's not registered. It's not in her name. She can't put it in her name. She was talking about, oh, I'm going to put the registration in my name. You know, there's just nothing she can do but hold that car. And, and that's it. She takes that thing and she drives it anywhere, gets out of it. She has no legal right to it. Uh, the cops, she had a piece of paper saying she has legal rights to it, but it's, a, I guess, a chief forged the signature according to what the guy's saying. I mean, who knows? Maybe he was dumb enough to actually sign the paper and it's not a forgery. But according to him, she forged that document. And so they've opened a criminal case now. And now an investigator has to get involved, and he's going to have to get a, a, a signature sample from this guy and then go out and look at her document and do a, a professional comparison uh, in the field. And if they've determined that you know she forged this document and that it's not his signature and that it's not a valid document giving her a uh, right to be in possession of that vehicle, then they will follow through with the, re the stolen report on the vehicle and impound it as a stolen vehicle. But I guess the cops came out, uh, looked at the document, looked at the car sitting there, listened to her story, and accepted it yesterday and, and did not uh, choose to take the vehicle in as a evidence at that time. And so when the cops left yesterday empty-handed, and then now I come out today as a repo man and I leave empty-handed, she's gonna feel absolutely sure that she has beat everybody and that no one's gonna get that car from her. And she's gonna keep running the story in her head over and over and over like a broken record and keep telling herself that she's gonna find, that there's a way she's gonna get this document uh, pushed through and then she's going to be able to get the registration in her name and she's going to be able to get a title to this thing and then she's going to own this vehicle because of all this money that she spent to him for it and all this money that she has uh, spent getting it out of some shop and storage fees that she's paid on it and all these receipts she has she's got this story in her head and this dialogue that's going to keep going over and over and over and no 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 one of any uh, experience level whatsoever is going to ever break her of that story it's it's cemented concrete titanium kryptonited there's no way with this. I, I, I got. I, I would back that up with a 26-year career uh, of experience that I've seen every level of of depth of uh, trash. That, and this is this is at the farthest end of the spectrum you can get on the bad side of, of a person that is so seasoned in this kind of stuff and been repossessed and credited. And I, I bet this, I bet she doesn't even have a hundred credit score. I would decide that this is the first person in history to have a zero credit score, maybe even a negative zero credit score. I mean, just, oh man, just listen to her story and her, her she's, she's got it down so pat and so perfect it, it, and so recited. I just was like, wow, it's just, it's, it's almost as good as me when I'm, you know, going through my scenarios and I'm talking to people out and I stay with, and I stick to my guns and I, you know, and I, and I wear people down and I get to the point that finally they're just like, okay, fine, whatever. You, know, you win, take the car, you know, and you know, that's, she's the opposite, 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 polar opposite. If I was a superhero, she would be the freaking nemesis. So really interesting account. Uh, it's one of those ones that's going to really test my experience and my skills and we'll see what, how we ultimately uh, end up on this one. But I've got a couple of things I've got to do, a couple of procedures. I've pow out with the finance company. We've got an agreement. We're not going to touch the truck, but we're going to leave it with a GPS tracking device on it. We're going to get one on the car. 
we're gonna watch it for, for vehicle history and see if it moves around, it, you know, see if I get notified that she's driving it. Because as soon as it moves, the GPS tracking device is gonna sense the movement and then I'll get notification and then I can get up there. But it's a very real likelihood that she's the kind of person that even if she drives it, she's gonna stay behind the wheel and not, or if she goes somewhere, she will be on the phone with someone and say, hey, move your car. She'll pull in, she'll have to pull in behind her. She'll never leave that car just sitting out where even there'd be the remote chance that there'd be a repo man that that come and, and take it from her. She just, she won't, she'll do everything possible. She'll use every one of our tactics that we have to get it. She'll use those against us because she's seen them time and again, time and again, time and again, time and again her whole life. And she's got, she's, she's the perfect black mirror image of white. Woo, fun, fun. So we ended up not picking anything up, didn't, uh, need the truck, but we didn't know that uh, at the time, you know, from the information we had, we were pretty certain we were going to pick up at least one of the two vehicles, and by the time I got out to where the second vehicle was at, I could have repossessed that truck, but like I said, they didn't want to piss him off, because they've got him working with them right now and giving them information, and so by taking the truck from him at this time, before we get the Magnum, just wouldn't have worked in our favor, and uh, by putting tracking devices on both vehicles, we can sit back and kind of watch and wait for her to make a mistake and kind of go from there so we had to follow the finance company's final ruling on that one and ended up not having to use the truck which i guess is also good too because this thing's leaking like a stuck pig and so i wasn't really particularly interested in picking anything up with the truck anyways today but had to come over here to the shop and take it down off the rack i've only been gone for about an hour and a half so they can put it back up there and get back to work get it ready for tomorrow and get the new get the lift all put back together all right so i'm just leaving the hospital just got back from dropping that repo off and swapping it out bringing the mustang back up shanda should be out of the hospital tomorrow which will be saturday <sighs> And uh, they just called and said the truck is done. So I'm gonna head that way, get it picked up, and we'll just load the Mustang on the back, tow it back over here, we'll drop the Mustang and just park it in a parking spot, park the truck next to it. Both up here. We'll get a couple repos ran with tonight. While we're still up here in Salt Lake, my Shanda sleeps tonight. I'll get those on video. But next stop is the Rocky Mountain Wrecker, Salt Lake City. Certified Asset Recovery Services preferred tow and lift mechanic.
You guys didn't wash it. You just got it done, man. Just Dell? Yeah. <clears throat> I called you. They were still filling up the hydraulics. Oh, how low was I? Do you remember how many quarts they used? No, it was a gallon. I mean, you were a gallon. A gallon or a quart? A gallon. That's four quarts, right? Yeah. So you guys had just put ten in, like last week. So I went. I knew it was spraying a lot faster than it was before. Okay. All right. Oh, we got a kid on Christmas, man. <laughs> you got me nice. It's working good now. It's clean. Good. Um, we did add that pivot pin just because that was all bad. So your total with the government is seventeen fifty-eight sixty-seven. Wow. An extra five over extra six hundred. Wow. Well, there's what we, we were guessing four hours, and it took five because. There was a piece in it that was bent, and they ended up trying to heat it, and then they had to cut it and fix it. So that's it. only an extra 85 bucks. What's the... You have... The Give me the breakdown other than the original 1165 we talked about. Recoil on the 1165. I'm trying to remember. Uh, like, was the shipping of the part higher than we thought? 10, 6, 750 plus the one... No, that was... Right okay, good. So, yeah, it was just the cylinder with... It was 1257. 1257. So 100 higher because of the extra labor. Well, it was the, no, that's not the labor. That was because of the freight. Because originally when we said 1165, that was a second day. Remember? Oh, uh -huh. And that was, a, you know, it's 167 bucks for freight. Right. That's what it ended up being. Next day, okay. Next day. And so cool. then all that we added was you had, there's the pin, the bolt, the bushing, and the cap that goes on that. And you're 105 plus... 12.5 plus 95.75 plus 45.88. And then there was the one extra hour labor, and then the government that nobody wins that I didn't quote you was the sales tax, and the sales tax is 115.82. Uh, okay, that's fine. So right. that's where it's at. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I was all prepared for 15. We went 17. I gave you a hundred dollar. I dropped a hundred bucks on you. So give me that amount again. 17. 17.58.67. 67. So I'm just gonna take some extra cars tonight. But then what I the two was, inner hoses? What, yeah. what did those come out to be? I was wondering They're what those... Short. They're only like... Little teeny guys? Yeah, 33? Short guys. Okay. But then what I did drop for you is I took 100 bucks off. Loyalty! Is that what you, you call know. it? I like it. That's better than 1800 Yeah. I like it. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. Wheel grind, cylinder, bushing removal and replacement, labor to repair, hydraulic force, fluid, female jig swivel, next day air, 14 fork cylinder. Is that what that big one is? Yep. Main pin, sneaker, cap pin, head bolt, or slotted nut, brass bushing. Nice. Cool. Maybe we no can get, get another 12 years out of this. <laughs> I'm not going to have that truck that long. We have 400,000 miles on the front end of the thing. So I'm going to remarket it to. Find me some newbie repo guy that wants a truck and sells them for fifteen thousand dollars. And then, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get me back into a self loader. I'm just wa watching for the right one. I'm, I want to get a Vulcan eight twelve intruder. Jared Ann, I know, I know, yeah. <coughs> I know. I just, I know. You know you have, you seen the, have you seen the new dynamic unit? Holy yeah. moly! The cylinders are still too small. I know, but I'm just saying the cl how clean the head is. It's the, they've gotten that. They've done what everybody else has done. Shaved all your pins. Recessed everything so that you know, no for oil pans and all that. They just it's just a good looking unit, but get you another dynamic. You can sit in your cab, you don't even have to get out. I didn't have to get out with my dynamic. I know dynamics and dynamics are close as far as being able to look down the back of the Vulcans. No, no, I'll be able to see backup camera. Forget looking down the back. Mm -hmm. I'm a backup camera guy. Yeah. I use digital technology. I never look out my back. Well, the Vulcans, you wouldn't be able to look down, but with the backup camera, you can. yeah, no, it's just a matter of getting used to your equipment, knowing where every I've even thought about a, 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 a unit. That has beep sensors in the end, so that when you get close to within, close to within a half foot of something, you have little lights on your dash, and you know, so you know left and right, oh, yeah. so you just never hit anything. I thought that'd be so. Cool. I, don't, I don't know why they don't put sensors in, in the lifts. It'd be so cool to have. There's a lot of guys that like. You should see the guy that demos the, the Jordan stuff. Mm -hmm. Guy is slick as I mean, He'll get in and out of things. Like he'll line up three cars, and he'll just slide in, pull things out, and line them back up, and he can do it all like in 25 seconds. He's mm -hmm. so quick. Yeah, those guys would do those 90s and, and straight out. The bumpers are that far apart. Oh, yeah. Like in New York, you know, they got the car after car after car after car down the street, you know. Those guys are good. They'll flip in a you know, single cab truck and just 
that's how my Dodge was. I love that little teeny short single cab with the. It's just I, mean, I got pictures where I was like that to a pole, you know, in an apartment complex, and just you got to pick, drop, pick, drop. You got you know a car that someone's dropped in under a parking garage sideways, and sort of tearing apart mechanically, and it's like. The dyna- I know of a, of a Ford. I think it's an 08. It has a six four in it. It's a dynamic on the back right now. How? What? What? Here's the truck. Oh wait. What do they want for? Twenty three or twenty four. That's pretty good. How many miles? Do you know? I don't cut my head. I don't know. Who has it? It's up in Oregon. It's one of our. Uh, it's one of our sister companies. So I'd have to fly up and drive it back down. That wouldn't be too bad. That or us. Either way. Where do you guys start to get a truck down here? Fuel five. Whatever it would cost you, basically. Yeah, same thing. My wife keeps telling me I've got to see Oregon. <laughs> yeah. It's not a bad looking unit. Is it, what color is it? It's a dark color. It's either blue or black. So I want black. If it's black, I might, if it's black, I might actually really be interested in that. Why don't you give me the info on that? I'll check if I can see that. Is that uh, old cylinder back here? Yes. I wanted to look at it. Dead center. So my camera got bumped just a little bit. Get it set. I like to be able to see the lift just at the very top of the camera.